So what, you're just gonna put your iPod on shuffle? Thank you, baby. Bitch, I'm an iPod. I am the greatest. I am the king of 2K and I keep making bang. Making bang. Making bang. Bitch, I'm an iPod. I am the greatest. I am the king of 2K and I keep making bang. Making bang. Every single song you own is a banger. Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy iPod King Carter here. I want to welcome you guys to a new video. Today, we're here to talk about NBA 2K24 and all the news that Mike Wang has dropped today via Twitter. Now, I'm not sure if you're not on Twitter, if you feel like it's an old hit app, you out your mind. All the information that you guys need to know about 2K24 is on Twitter. The devs are very active on Twitter. I have them in my special little list on Twitter that I follow and I just keep up with their tweets. But Mike Wayne went absolutely insane today. I know that we were supposed to be getting city information and stuff like that in the last week of August. And that is amongst us. Among, amongst? Yeah, amongst us. Ew. But um, he dropped a, a, a hammer, a banger, an absolute shot to the chest, punch to the face, back backhand across many of faces of 2K24. And that's with the death of 6ix9ine PGs. I know what you guys are thinking. We don't care. Thank God they're out of here. 6ix9ines, nerf them to the ground. Listen, there were a lot of people who love the 6ix9ine build simply because it could do it all. I'm not gonna lie, when I created my 6ix9ine PG, I felt like Magic Johnson. I am probably one of the only people who utilized the 6ix9ine build for what it actually was. It was a build that could literally do everything, and if you manipulated the badges with badge loadouts the right way, your build could do it all. For instance, my primary badge loadout, and I will say before I go into this, I think we deserve to have at least five badge loadouts. I know that core badges was a huge thing in NBA 2K23, but I feel like badge loadouts need to be a huge thing in NBA 2K24. Now, my first badge loadout was for an uh, ISO PG. That means that it had my clamp breaker, my angle breaker, my uh, unpluckable, my hyper drive, like all of the actual you know handles for days all of the actual badges that i needed for dribbling and to stay dribbling because you know I, I used to use up 18 seconds of the clock playing around with my food and stuff like that but my secondary badge loadout was for my hash sitter my hash sitter was primary lock and then shooting so all of the playmaking badges that i needed on you know tier three I didn't need them anymore. I, I took away unpluckable, took away handles for days. I think I still had a little bit of clamp breaker, but I believe that it was cord and everything. So all I needed was shooting badges, which mean I had to change my core badge load out, right? Then I would change a lot of my uh, badges that I needed for core. So I had limitless range on core. Of course, I had um, guard up. I know a lot of people probably in the chat like, bro, guard up don't work. I don't care what you think. For me, guard up did his thing, okay? I also had dead eye, I had blinders, had all the shooting badges I needed, as well as all the lock badges I needed. I had, you know, my clamps, I had my interceptor, had my menace, had my uh, off-ball pests, I had my chase down art. Well, you know, chase down art really didn't really work that much. I had my defensive anchor. I even had uh, my box out um, badge as well, because sometimes, you know, when you guard and ball, sometimes a lot of six, seven and up builds would drive. And if I get the stop, I need to get the board. Then for my third badge loadout, I used to love that loadout, man. It was my corner sitter, man. Listen, just imagine your badge loadout being almost all defense, right? For the lock aspect and just needing maybe one or one, just one core for shooting. And the rest was, you know, I never needed any cores for finishing because, you know, we had all the greatest tiers, you know, or I'll be the six nines. <laughs> but like I was saying, it was a corner sitter uh, uh, badge loadout and it worked perfectly for me, but I only had three. So sometimes there were moments where I would say, okay, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep my hash uh, load out the way it is because primarily at a tall PG, if I'm running with a, a real PG, six, three and under, they will put them at PG and me at shooting guard. So I always needed to be hash. You always wanna be circle in that scenario and uh, be for all you Xbox users, right? So now that we don't have the six nines, it's like, what do I do? 
So I've decided to make a YouTube video um, that'll probably come out either tomorrow or the day after that. Make sure you guys check out for it. I'll probably drop it in the description after I make it, but I'm changing my entire uh, aspect, my views on NBA 2K24 in a way that I want to play. Now that the 6.9 PG is no longer around, they do have six eights. So I want to talk to you guys about the minimums and the maximums, right? Mike Wayne definitely tweeted that six APGs are the max, six nine shooting guards are the max, six eleven small forwards are the max, seven foot power forwards are the max, and seven three centers are the max. Now, a lot of people yesterday was trying to figure out if Wimby was going to be a possible build to make. Wimby is a anomaly, okay? He is 7'5 listed, but without shoes, he's about 7'3 and a quarter, 7'4, something like that, right? <laughs> Long story short, you can't make Wimby. So all you centers out there that think y'all finna have a grand old time at the park in a wreck, sit down, okay? Sit down, all right? Now, let's talk about minimum uh, heights, right? Now, we all know that there will be a couple troll builds out there that have these actual setups for instance the 57 pg it's really been a thing for like the last three years some people love making the five nines the five sevens just to play around at the park just for content purposes they love that then we also have the six foot shooting guard the six three small forward the six six power forward and the biggest troll build of them all the six seven center now i ain't gonna cap a six seven center is crazy because when you think about it, if somebody's playing a wreck and they happen to be playing five out, you're going to get torched if it's a five out and you give up that corner to a drive. So it's really, really hard for most traditional bigs to guard that six seven uh, center, especially when that build has no playmaking in it except for enough for break starter and it's getting pushed down and you got six nine and six eight small forwards and spot power forwards that can come from them wings crash the boards and you have to stay out on the corner because if you are a traditional big and you leave your man you potentially give up three points so you getting boxed out by two to three people every play and it's really really hard for you so that's a huge troll bill and it's actually a little bit of you know I would say strategy to it, but you have to have all the right pieces for it to make it work because you can still get flooded by a team that's running traditional bills. Okay. Now, speaking of rec, Mike Wang also tweeted about rec. He said that rec bots will be noticeably better timing with their jump shots, but it's tough to balance. We want them to be com competent, but not OP. We will be looking out for you guys feedback for the next month. What I hear from that is, if one of my teammates quit, you better not leave that corner. Because if you leave that corner wide open, I'm going to dot that corner. If you think you're going to double team me and let the AI cut and I got a shooting big on my team in the other corner, I swear, to, I swear, leave that corner. I'm going to dot that corner again to my shooting big. Or if you're going to double team me and let the dude cut in the big don't help, easy buckets for the AI. So all I'm saying is get up off my back and stop double teaming me in the wreck, bro. I'm not nice. I'm not nice. I promise you. I'm not. I don't shoot 68% for three. I promise. I promise. I don't have an 80 plus win percentage. I promise. <laughs> Stay away from me. <laughs> now, the next thing Mike Wayne tweeted about, he talked about driving dunk as well as the actual adrenaline bar percentage drop for the defense. This person named AO Street asked, uh, does driving dunk rating play a factor in the green window for contact dunks as well as the open dunk? He said, yes, it's the main driver for the dunk meter window size. So I will be probably be making a, a, a very high dunk rating, maybe, you know, 88 to a 96, somewhere around there, maybe even 99, you never know. Right now, as far as the defense goes, uh, Quay asked, did the defensive adrenaline debate come to an end yet? And he said, I currently have it set to first bar, you lose 7.5 percentage after the first reach. Your second bar, you lose, you lose 15%. And then your third bar, you lose 50%. So if you have no adrenaline bars, you lose 50% of whatever rating you had. And man, oh man, I can tell you right now. If you don't have nothing higher than maybe a 90 as a lock, that is not a lock, okay? Because after you lose your third bar, you are not usable. 
You are not a usable build. You understand me? You will get cooked. That's all I'm saying. Last but not least on this long list of news, Mike Wang talked about the signature animations within the game. Now, this is a, a lengthy paragraph because he needed to let everyone know but that there's a lot of misinterpreted info going out there. And this is what he had to say. This is misinfo. I said there are 150 motion styles, not just dribble animations. There are a lot more dribbles than that. He said 25 dribble styles, 31 behind the backs, 18 step backs, 45 crossovers, 27 hezzies, 26 escapes, 20 combo packs, 102 breakdown combos, 67 size ups, and 30 spins. Yeah. All y'all out there making all these videos, all this, all this info with the wrong info is crazy. You got to wait till you hear it from the source. That's why when you guys watch my channel, I make sure I get it from the source and I try my best to make sure that the source is not trolling us. So Mike Wayne has been very, very vocal on Twitter. Wolf has been vocal as well. Wolf, Wolf been in his bag. Wolf even told me about a passing style that, you know, I might tell y'all in another video, but you know, I might keep that, you know what I'm saying, under the under the cuff. Under the cuff, you know what I'm saying? I might keep that to myself. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? There's a lot going on. But listen, stay tapped in. Make sure y'all follow me on Twitter. I'm retweeting. I'm replying to a bunch of stuff. Make sure y'all turn in Twitter notes on because I'm telling you, you want to keep up with a lot of this info. The game drops the eighth. We have literally less than two weeks to figure out all that we can about NBA 2K24. You know what I'm saying? So listen, rest in peace to Kobe. Happy birthday to him. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? And listen, I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Make sure you like, subscribe. I'll see y'all next time. It's your boy IKC signing out. Peace. So what, you're just going to put your iPod on shuffle? Bitch, I'm an iPod. I am the greatest. I am the king of 2K and I keep making bang. Making bang. Making bang. Making bang. Bitch, I'm an iPod. I am the greatest. I am the king of 2K and I keep making bang. Making bang. Every single song you own is a banger.